Masks in SpeedGrade work a lot like the track mat keying video effect inside Premiere Pro. You use the track mat key effect to create a region within a clip in which you want to make a change or outside of which you want to make a change. So you might highlight a face, a sky, or a building, and then apply changes to it or outside of that object. Well, masks have the same basic functionality inside SpeedGrade, but in general, they're easier to work with. You don't need a separate graphic and you don't have to work on a separate layer. So to see how masks work inside SpeedGrade, start up SpeedGrade. Click on Open Project, go to Working Files, Premiere Pro Projects, and open up SG Masks. Click on Open. We're going to apply masks to two different still images. There's image number one and image number two, but this one's going to have a bug associated with it, so I'm going to show you the workaround for that bug when I show you this particular version of it. And then we've got three video clips that we're going to apply masks to. So let's go back to this first one here. I'm going to introduce you to masks by using a vignette. But to see how the vignette works, I want to change this clip first. So I've got the adjustment layer selected there, and I'm going to reduce the tonality, make it darker, bring it down like so. And we'll bring down the gain as well, the gain and the gamma. And the vignette then will protect this area. It'll keep it from getting dark and then make the outside edges dark. Now to apply a mask, we need to go to this panel here. And if you don't see the panel, click on this little guy there, that little triangle, and open it up like so, or press the W key, and click on the mask button. Here are the mask controls. There are three presets. There's a circle, a square, and a vignette. Now the vignette has this fall off where it goes from the edge of the mask then to where the mask is not being applied and go either direction. It works kind of like applying the blur to the track mat graphic when you're working inside Premiere Pro. But here you have much more control. So far nothing's happened because we haven't applied this mask to the clip. So I'm going to do that first. And I do that down here inside the layers stack. Now, when you apply a mask to the layer, a little graphic will show up here inside this layer, but sometimes it's slow to apply, and unless you click on it, then it shows up right there. There's a little graphic saying you've applied a mask to this layer. But nothing's happened yet. You need to tell it what to do. Right now, it's in neutral. This little line there in that blue box tells you that you've applied the mask, but you haven't told it whether you want to apply the tonality that you've changed inside it or outside it. And you tell it that by using one of these two buttons here. That applies the tonality inside it. That applies it outside it. So we want the changes to go outside of the mask. So I'll click on that. There you go. Now we've got the inside protected and the outside with the changes applied to it. Now to see the vignette again, we need to click on the word mask here and that turns it back on. So let's take a look at these controls here. This is called the widget and there's a widget button down here. You can turn it on or off. I'm going to control this vignette with the widget. This little plus sign lets you move it around like that. The box in the middle lets you change the size of it overall. Up or to the right makes it larger. Left or down makes it smaller. The big horizontal arrow adjusts things left and right like so. And the big vertical arrow, it does what you'd expect. This little triangle twists things horizontally. This guy does it vertically. This little outside thing adjusts the size of the fall off. You can have fall off on the square, the circle, anything you want, just by using this little box here. If I move it to the right or up, it makes it larger. Down or left makes it smaller. If you want to control individual points, you can. Make sure the selection tool is active down here and click on a point. You can move that around like so. You can change the fall off as well, like so. You can marquee select to select multiple points. I'll go up here and just drag a marquee selection around four points. You can probably barely see the marquee, but I've got these four points selected. I click on one of them and drag. It takes care of all four. Or I can use the widget for this. I can go up sideways or all together. If I want to delete a point, it's kind of a process. I'll need to click away to deselect these guys. I'll select a point that I want to delete. So let's click on that one there. And then I go down here and click on this little button to delete it. I'll undo that by clicking this. Adding a point works differently. I click on this little button to add a point. That turns it on, makes a little blue thing there. That means that you can go around here and add points. Now, if you just add points randomly, it gets kind of weird because it tries to move points around to fill that gap. I'll undo that. It's best to work on the line. This guy will go away in a second when I click on a line. You see a little white dot there that sort of snaps to the line when you add a point. If you click and hold down your mouse, then you can move it around. If you take your mouse away and try to select it, you're just going to add another point. If you want to now go select a point, go back down here and click on the little selection tool. That way you can select a point like so. Sometimes it's hard to select the point and end up selecting the handles. These handles are bezier handles. I like to change the shape of the curve like so. They work together like this. They're not called bezier handles here inside SpeedGrade, but that's what they are. In SpeedGrade, these guys are called smooth splines. You can change the smooth spline into just a regular spline where the handles are broken or into a corner point. And you do that with these controls down here. So you click a point like that, for example, which associates itself with its matching partner over there. If you click on this, it'll make it a corner point, both of those guys. So now if I click on this one, you'll see that it just kind of goes out at an angle like that. No handles. 
If I click on the second one here, that gives them handles. It gives you a little more control, but it's kind of hard to grab those handles sometimes, but there you go. If you can't grab a handle, you can always zoom in on the scene here by changing this thing from fit to something else like 75% or something. Then you can see the handles better. Notice the handles work independently here. And if you want to go back to the smooth spline, you just click on this guy and now you're back to a Bezier curve where the handles work together. All right, let's move on down the line here. I'm going to go back to fit here and go to this next clip. This next clip will have a problem. I'm going to select the portrait side of things instead of the adjustment layer for now. Click on that. This portrait started its life as something significantly greater than an HD size. It's about 3,000 pixels tall. So I used the motion fixed effect inside Premiere Pro and brought it down to 1080 in height. So it matches the HD height here. And things will go south here when we apply a mask to it. So I'm going to drop down the tonality here, make it much darker so we can see this in action. Go back to the masks here, click on the vignette. I'm going to fix the vignette so it fits the image here. Then we'll apply it. Now I'm going to go down to this layer and apply it. Now there's a little indicator telling us that we've got a mask applied to this thing, but we haven't told it what to do yet. I'm going to say apply the grading to the outside of the mask. And look at that. It's just a tiny little thing in the middle. That's because the mask is being applied to the original 1920 by 1080 portion of this clip instead of the entire size of the clip. And the mask back on again, you can see that's the expected size of the mask, but the reality is that's the real application of the mask. So it doesn't work. And if I try to fix this by using an adjustment layer, it still won't work there either. Reset this, go to the adjustment layer. I'll just show you what happens when I knock down the luminance here. Watch this. It will apply it only to the 1920 by 1080 segment of this clip, even though the adjustment layer has nothing to do directly with that clip. So that is a bug. You can overcome this by taking the mask and applying it to this guy and just making the mask much larger and seeing how it works. But when you go back to Premiere Pro, it will not work, so don't bother. The workaround to this is to use the transform effect. The transform effect is an effect you can apply to a clip and use it instead of motion so that you can adjust the positioning of it when it happens in the stacking order of effects inside Premiere Pro. So this next clip over here has the motion effect applied to it and then the lumetri effect applied below that such that the motion is applied first and then lumetri is applied on top of that. And that's how you overcome this. So the same size, I shrunk it down to 40%, but now we're going to apply a mask to it. So I'm going to drop down the tonality again and we'll apply a vignette over here. We'll adjust the size, make sure we can see this thing in action. And we'll apply the grading to the outside of the mask by clicking on that and now it works. And this will work back inside Premiere Pro as well. So the workaround for this bug is to use the transform effect and then apply the Lumetri effect kind of in neutral back inside Premiere Pro below the transform effect and everything will work out for you. Let's move on down the line to this little clip here. I want to use the square mask here as sort of a starting point. But I'm going to apply it to the adjustment layer, which I think is kind of a better workflow. So let's click on the square mask here. There's our mask. I'm going to adjust the points here. These are all corner points. So I'll just drag them to the corners of this building here like that and take you down there to the left like that. And you, I'm going to bring down below the branches. That's kind of a hard edge there, and I don't want that hard edge, so I want to add some points to it. So I go down here to this little plus guy there, add some more points. Now these points will not be corner points when I add them. They will be Bezier curves. So I'll click, click another one and kind of pull it now at the same time. Click and pull back. Same thing up here, I'm going to just kind of click and pull down a little bit. We're here, click, click and pull in. Now those will still be kind of hard edged and I need to adjust the handles to really finish this process, but that's pretty good. I'm going to put one more point right there and pull it out a bit. Now my work might be easier if I applied some kind of a change to this as I did the work. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change the color a bit. So we're going to make this thing oranger the way it's supposed to be. Dragging the slider to the right makes the entire scene orange. Then I go over here and I'm going to apply this thing inside the mask instead of outside the mask. So I click on this button instead. Now we're inside the mask, which looks pretty darn good. But even so, I probably don't want to change the trees there that much. I mean, we've got a hard edge to the trees. I want to kind of soften it with a little drop off, kind of like a vignette. So I'm going to use this guy to do that, but I don't want to apply it to everything. I want to apply it only to some selected points. So I move off to the side here, and I get the selection tool. I marquee select those points there on the left. I go back here and turn on the widget. I'm going to take this and drag it to the right to expand the drop-off there like so. So now we have a bit of a drop-off there across the tree branch. So it's not quite so extreme, although it was pretty subtle anyways. But that is a great way to create a drop-off like that just for a portion of your mask. It's going down one more notch now. I want to talk about building a mask from scratch and show you that it's kind of cumbersome. And then we'll go to the alternative route here. So I've got this guy selected there. We're going to make a mask here. So I'm going to do it from scratch by clicking this little add points icon there. So I click to make a point, make another point here. And unlike the pen tool inside Premiere Pro and the titler, 
the next point actually creates a region as opposed to another line. Like over here, for example, you see we've now made a region, not a straight line. And that's a big difference here. It gets really kind of cumbersome building that way. I think it's better to start with a square or a circle. So I'm going to get rid of this mask by clicking on empty like that. I'm also going to help see the borders of my mask by bringing down the tonality a bit here, making it darker like so. Now we want to highlight just this area there. So I'm going to start off with a square, get my selection tool, bring the corner up to there, this corner over there, bring this corner down to here, like that. I think you get a sense of how this works. And now I'm going to add some points. So click on this little add point tool there. Click here and pull back. Click here and pull back. I can click and pull in a bit. Same routine as before. I don't want to get too carried away here. Just want to show you how this works. So you can make a mask like so. It's much easier to start with a square than to try to build it from scratch because you're creating a closed space rather than creating a straight line as you do inside Premiere Pro. All right, something like that. So let's see how this is working. I want to apply it to the outside. So we highlight the oranges or the lemons. There you go. See how that works. Click on mask again, and we can see the edges of our mask. If we want to make some adjustments, we can, but so far, I think we're doing all right here. So that's how you draw a mask from scratch. I think you should start, generally speaking, with a square or a circle rather than trying to just click a bunch of points. Finally, let's go on down here a little bit. We're going to talk about vignetting again, but I'm going to apply the same vignette twice just to see how that works. Because the image is kind of bright, I want to darken around the edges like a vignette, but I also want to darken the inside as well. So we're going to have one mask that we can apply twice. So to see how we do that, let's first of all create the darkness that we want for the vignette. So I'll bring this thing down quite a bit like so. It's our vignette darkness, which is maybe a bit extreme, but I want it to be obvious. Click on the vignette, get the selection tool so we don't add a point. Like so, like so, and let's apply it so we can see it better. So I'm going to apply this to the outside. Click on mask again to see it. Now it's kind of extreme looking now because it's really bright, relatively speaking, inside, but we're going to darken the inside. The way we do that is by adding another primary layer by clicking this little plus down here, plus P. That's a primary layer like that. And I want to connect that primary layer to the mask down here. I do that with this little button right there that connects this primary layer down to the layer below it in terms of the mask. So now the mask shows up there, a little triangle again. But you haven't told it how you want to apply the mask to this layer. You just have connected it to that mask. You can have a different mask applied to every single layer here if you want to. But in this case, we're applying the same mask. But I want to work on the inside, not the outside. So I click on this. We haven't changed this primary layer yet, but we're going to darken it just a bit here because it's a little bit too bright. So let's bring down offset and the gain as well. So now we have this darker area inside with a vignette around the outside. Let me just turn these guys off so you see the four. I click the bottom one. That affects both because the mask is applied to both. The top one. I want to make the bottom one a little bit darker. I can pull that down even more to further enhance the vignette there. But you see we can apply the same mask to two different layers here and have one be inside and one be outside. So I think you can see that working with masks inside SpeedGrade is a lot easier than working with the track matte key effect inside Premiere Pro.